Hey guys, what's going on? How are we all? Hope you guys are having a great season 13. I know lots of people might be having a hard time because Ghostblade's so prolific, Storm is so prolific, and there are some champions in the game who you just see every game who make you want to rip your hair out. And these champions are in this video. So if you want to ELO and flay guys in the next two weeks when 13.11 hits the rift, this is the video for you. But yeah, if you do actually want to improve those tips, they come left, right, and center at you on our website at gameweb.com. Our challenger players and coaches from around the world are uploading daily videos to the website that help thousands of people already so why not just join the club that's all you have to do just sign up get exclusive access to the library content and gg well played you will climb like never before so let's get into the countdown now we're going to start on the top lane and there's only one champion i've got here now this champion you might think it could be malphite maybe it's cled who we're going to mention in our builds video because it's kind of like an op setup for cled and lots of other top laners by going stride breaker but this champion is actually just like a pure tank well, you can actually go Divine Sunder on this champion, but guys, I'm talking about going Frostfire Gauntlet Poppy. When you go this champion Poppy, because of the recent buffs to her, remember? When you go Poppy with Frostfire, and then in your runes, you take something like Grassley Undying, and then Shield Bash, which works with your passive, Bro, like, versing this champion in lane is really difficult, and she cucks so many champions in top lane. Like, think about popular top laners as well. Like, let's say Jax and Camille, for instance. These two champions who love to dash around the joint, they are just giga cucked by this hammering Yordle. So, all you have to do is press your W, and it's just like you insta-win lane. She's also really good out of lane because your team fighting potential, you have really good utility. And again, if you see a lot of dashes on the enemy team, you can just lock in Poppy and press W. So, she's an amazing top laner right now. In Challenger, she has like a 50 55.5% win rate in a lot of games as well. That's not like 10 games. So definitely consider, guys, if you're a top laner, locking in Poppy in 13.11 as well, because nothing should be changing. Now, moving into the jungle, we've got four champions here. Now, junglers at the moment, lots of people are going to be like, oh, they're so broken with Ghostblade. Like, yeah, some of them are pretty busted, like Rengar, and you've got Kha'Zix, other champions, of course. But those two champions, Rengar and Kha'Zix, they are here, but not because of Ghostblade. They're here because they're innately busted. I don't care what anyone says, Kha'Zix is innately broken. Broken. Because of the Q buffs last patch ride, buffing your Q damage means that your isolation damage with your Q. And remember, isolation is easier to come by because Riot buffed that a couple of patches ago. So the actual like range of your isolation, right? This has been amazing for Kha'Zix. And lots of people think that Ghostblade is the only item you can go on these champions. Go Eclipse! What is wrong with Eclipse? It's still giving you good lethality. You're still going to be able to one-shot people come level 6. And because of the survivability it's giving you with the movement speed and the shield, and remember, they buffed this not long ago. So when the fights start going longer, you can proc the passive multiple times. It's unreal still. Even check the win rates right now in 13.10. Eclipse is an amazing item on Rengar and Kha'Zix. And the other jungler I just want to mention here, guys, as well. So lots of people might be building Ghostblade. They might be building Storm Rays on this champion. If you're going Graves in 13.11, again, just build Eclipse. Get a collector afterwards that's all you need guys like on these champions build the eclipse on these attack damage junglers but again that's not why they're broken graves just like Kha'Zix got buffed recently right and Rengar he didn't really get buffed recently but he's just one of the most broken champions in the game he still one shots everyone he's notoriously hard to kill because of his empowered W it's basically a free cleanse right super annoying to play against and it should be easy playing a champion like Rengar and then Kha'Zix in the late game in most elos unless you're in like something like challenger because the enemy players won't know how to group and actually sequence their sweepers together right they won't protect their teammates like they probably should so that's why they're here as well now the final jungler to talk about again is just one of those innately broken champions because of the recent buffs to nidley and we've even seen her in pro play right we saw her like picked and banned at msi a lot this champion's got to be here guys like the actual armor buffs what do they do like buff your armor your base armor and armor per level you can't kill this champion bro like most champions in the jungle i feel like ad as well attack damage base so nidley just wrecks everything now it's almost like you have to pick ap into her and she has no counters anyway like i think it's impossible to beat an italy because her kit is uncounterable she has range she has kite she has one shot potential she even has like consistent damage if you're a melee champion because of her auto attacks especially with something like red buff very oppressive very hard to beat and that's why she's here and especially in high reload she has insane ban rates just because she's that busted so i've got to put her on this countdown now the final five champions one of these is a mid laner and guys if you are enjoying this content make sure to leave a like down below this mid laner well it's actually the only mid laner on this countdown like i just said this is nico so I could have mentioned maybe Annie, I could have mentioned Ari, right? But for Nico with Rocket Bell, this is by 
Sapphire head and shoulders, and we ain't talking the shampoo thing, head and shoulders above everybody else. And again, like lots of champions on this countdown, Nico's been buff recently. And when you pair Nico with Rocket Belt, the gap closing potential, and remember as well, like 13.10, they gave you extra AP ratio in your ultimate, which was kind of nutty. This combined with Rocket Belt and the magic pen you get, people are going boom, bro. And because of your W, you can disguise yourself and get around the map and, you know, kind of like wait for dragons and wait for Baron fights, someone to walk into lane and then boom, you completely one shot them with the belt of Rocket. Nico has to be mentioned here. And if you guys are actually playing any of these champions, do you think they're going to be any less OP in 13.11? Let us know in the comments section. Now, three AD carries, guys, to talk about here. Well, two of them are AD carries. The other one is an AB carry in the bot lane. And yeah, let's start with the actual traditional AD carries. The first of these being Lucian. Lucian's like a weird inclusion, you might be thinking. Lucian and High Reloads has like 53% win rates. Reason being, well, first of all, it's because if you go something like Norvori Quick Blades, which is getting changed next patch, so you're losing haste, but you're getting attack damage. Amazing. Lucian cares about that like quick trade, right? So ability haste, of course, is important. You want your QW and E on lower cooldowns, but you're still getting enough, getting even more damage now. So that trade where you E in, or like, you know, your support lands something, your jungler lands something, or the enemy, you know, support hooks your support, and you go in and just one shot them because of it. Navori Quick Blades next patch on Lucian is going to be even better, I feel anyway. Then follow this up with a rapid fire cannon into Essence Reaver. This actually has like the best win rate with a three item build on Lucian and high reloads, and it just makes sense to me in my head as well. The recent changes to rapid the extra movement speed, and of course the range you get kind of early in a game. It's amazing for Lucian, being a short range champion, and he pairs so well with lots of good supports right now. The stuff like Sona, like Milio, even Janna he's good with, right? Lots of people forget that champions with shields do really well with Lucian because of that passive he's got, his vigilance passive, right? So Lucian's got to be mentioned here, guys. Amazing AD carry to pick and works well with lots of popular supports. Now, the other traditional AD carry is Cogmore, of course. And you might be like, but he's like, Runans is getting nerfed. Yes, that's correct. Correct. Kraken Slayer is getting less magic damage. Yes, that's correct. But you're still getting one item in Sue's Rage Blade. I think it's enough to keep Cogmore here. Seriously, I think the champion is super busted because of those buffs not so long ago. Just like lots of these champions, right? I think Coggy has to be here. I don't see Baby Baron moving out of this countdown anytime soon. Even if Runans is taking it, even if Kraken Slayer is taking a hit, I still think he's going to be insane in the bot lane. And yeah, Cogmore's got to be here as well. But if you want, potentially, honestly, like I'm happy to say that I think this is the most OP bot laner in the game and will be in 13.11 as well because they're nerfing lots of stuff around bot lane, right? So if you're going something like Ghostblade as Jin or Draven. If you're going something like Stormraiser, as lots of AD carries are, as Karthus, you're actually just chilling, bro. And the big reason here is because Lost Chapter is cheaper. So for a scaling champion like Karthus, you get to Lost Chapter quicker. And when you go something like TP and you just play for Lost Chapter in the early game, once you get to it, you're impossible to stop, bro. Like seriously, I think it's such an OP buff they gave to Lost Chapter, making it 1100 gold. Like yes, Leandris might be an extra 200 because that's what they've changed. So they made Lost Chapter earlier, but they've delayed your Mythic Spike. But they really haven't because Lost Chapter gets you there quicker because it makes that laning phase, it just secures it right as a weaker early game champion. Karthus is amazing, and because lots of champions are still very close range, Karthus excels in a meta like this. So I think you guys should definitely consider picking Karthus in 13.11. I think it's free low, honestly. Now, the final champion, guys, to talk about. Any questions, by the way, about, like, you know, the champions we mentioned or maybe some of the tech, let us know in the comments section. And the final champion to talk about is the only support here, this being Rakan. And if you're picking Rakan, I think he's the most versatile support because we have Echoes of Helia getting nerfed. We've got Arden Sensor getting nerfed. So champions like Milio, like Janna, they're going to take a bit of a hit from this. But Rakan, Shirelius is not changing and you're going to be chilling. After this, you can go something like Zeke's Convergence. That's unchanged as well, right? So in 13.11, Rakan is largely staying the same, which is a good thing because he's got like a 52, 53% win rate in every single ELO S plus to get me out. These champions really haven't changed that much out of there. So those guys were the 10 most OP champions for 13.11. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully you agreed with some of the picks again let us know in the comment section if you did please leave a like down below and until our next season 13 upload this has been it peace